Hello everybody, I'm Gwen Campbell Mendes and welcome to Mom's Favorites Books My Mother Loved. Um, so I have a bit of a confession to make. <sighs> See, uh, I asked my father for the list and he gave me the list. The difficulty with this list is that well, there are a lot of very big books on it. Now, I don't have any problem with big books. <sighs> Most of us who really enjoy reading don't tend to have a problem with big books. Because if you enjoy reading, then a big book just means you get to have more to read. Assuming you're enjoying the book. Uh, and there's the rub, of course. I just trekked my way through the USA series. Now... I understand a lot of people think it's great art. I just found it mostly tiresome. So, when my father handed me this list, he said, Well, your mother loved Lawrence Durrell. She thought he was fantastic, so uh, you should probably read the Alexandria Quartet. Uh, here's the thing. That's, that's a lot. And he said, if you get tired of this, well, then maybe you should just read uh, Sauve-Kilpe. Sauve-Kilpe. Pardon my French. So... Uh, that's what I wound up reading, and I should probably get to the Alexandria Quartet, and I may get back to that at some point when I feel like braving it. But in the meantime, I can't really regret this one, uh, because, uh, also for the record, this is not the cover of the book that I have, because the cover of the copy that I have access to is just a plain cloth cover in a shocking shade of salmon, actually. Um, I, I don't know, but it is, it's, it's salmon. Um, no, I don't mean the fish, I mean the color, look it up on the internet. Uh, but it does have the Nicholas Bentley pictures. Um, and the thing about this is, based on my father's complaints, uh, because, you know, I do trust his literary taste to a reasonable degree, at least in terms of quality of literature. Um, it's a very particular kind of writing that lends itself very well to this, which is a bunch of very light, humorous, uh, very light and humorous stories which are connected by having the same cast of characters, more or less, um, and the same protagonist roughly or rather the same narrator but uh, they're not they are not remotely serious it's not in depth it's not making any sort of grand cultural or social statement um i can tell you that this was a uh a valentine's day gift to my mother from her then boyfriend because uh, the interior of this book has a, uh, has writing on it telling, saying February 14th, 1972, love the then boyfriend. Um, and it was apparently sold for 98 cents in Montreal, who knew? But, uh, this is, this is very much... A, this is very much lighthearted, and the thing about the thing about lighthearted work is that lighthearted things, um, things that you would expect to have this kind of drawing in it, that we would expect to have a discussion about the exigencies and difficulties of getting a good haircut in. Bulgaria, which I assume is a sort of a pseudo-Eastern European imaginary country, um, you... There's a particular kind of writing that will work with this that will not necessarily work for more serious offerings. And as such, I'm... I'm less sure that I would enjoy the Alexandria Quartet. Nonetheless, these were an enjoyable romp. A, they're ridiculous and they're silly, and the titular story, uh, Sovkipe, uh, which is the introductory story, 
is basically it's about uh, some sort of of uh, embassy in, as I said before, Bulgaria, which um, the idea is. I mean, they're they're not in Bulgaria, but um, in this particular story, but they frequently are in this. But the idea is that it's just telling stories about the. It's very English, by the way. This is. Um, I haven't double checked whether Lawrence Durrell was English, but this is a remarkably English style of humor. It's very much about making fun of the kinds of people who wind up working in embassies, not because they are genuinely devoted to public service and foreign affairs, or because they have some sort of flair for communicating with foreigners, but because it's the kind of place that you put people who wind up in public service that you need to get them out of the way somewhere. So you put them in an embassy somewhere that's relatively safe to leave them, and they don't cause any particular trouble, and everyone feels quite safe ignoring them. Uh, so our our narrator, Antrobus, uh, every story in this begins with something, said Antrobus. Self-keeper begins, we dips, said Antrobus, are brought up to be resourceful, to play almost any part in life, to be equal to any emergency, almost. How else could one face all those foreigners? But the only thing for which we are not prepared, old man, is blood. And what follows in in this story is that uh, that at this per at the embassy at that particular moment on that particular day uh, they were all invited to watch a circumcision and they drew straws who at the embassy was going to have to go and Antrobus lost so he winds up being sent by the ambassador to watch this uh, uh, to go and, and see this particular uh, event. And it turned out that uh, they were not going to uh, circumcise a baby, but they were instead going to circumcise a 20-year-old young man who had just returned from university in London, uh, or rather, just down from Oxford. And... Uh, he and the others flee during the, mel the melee that ensues when this young man decides that at age 20 now is not the time for him to uh, have bits of his anatomy chopped off. And when he gets back, uh, Polk Mowbray was in two minds about the sort of figure I had cut, but after giving it thought, he summed up the matter jolly sagely. In diplomacy, he said, it is so often a case of sauve qui peut. That is, save who you can. Um, and the rest of the book runs very much in this vein. This isn't a book that has a lot of depth. It's not a book that I can say a lot about. I can say that if you are the sort of person who enjoys light, fluffy English as I said, these are very upper-class twit sorts of books, although Antrobus describes them all as dips rather than, you know, upper-class twits, but it boils down to approximately the same thing. Um, and uh, this particular one is from a story in which he wound up being sent to Paris on some particular jaunt or other, and when he found that he had arrived on a holiday and everything was closed, including the embassy, he decided to visit uh, the cousin of one of his fellow dips who had asked him to look in on the young man. It turned out that this particular young man, for reasons unknown, had lugged the skeleton of his aunt Margaret with him to Paris, and now everybody thought that he had possibly murdered somebody and was keeping the dead body, uh, in his flat, and Antropus gets dragged along on various hijinks as they get the uh, skeleton out of there and then wind up being arrested, and he manages at the end to leg it, abandoning, the, uh, abandoning his young friend uh, to his fate. 
And, you know, there's, there's Antrobus with a skeleton and a policeman coming around the corner because they do get chased by the police in this. It's, uh, it's kind of Benny Hill and, uh, so... I, there's really not much to say. The writing in this, it works very well for the sort of thing it is. It won't be to everybody's taste. Um, but I found it amusing enough. It's not hilarious, but it is amusing. So at the moment, I can recommend, uh, if nothing else, Lawrence Durrell's light humorous works. Um... The final picture that I took is from the final story uh, in which one of the members of their little group, uh, was it Polk Mulberry? Uh, anyway, um, yes, it, it was uh, that he is sleepwalking and their butler... Drage, or however that's supposed to be pronounced, I honestly don't know, because the English have this horrific tendency to pronounce things in ways that make no sense, uh, even to us native English speakers. I mean, consider the fact that Worcester actually has whole syllables in it that you don't pronounce. Anyways, uh, so it's a story of you know, Polk Mulberry going and and sleepwalking and they just barely stop him from uh, causing some trouble. Anyway, I, I don't really have much else to say on this. Uh, if you decide to look it up, I hope you enjoy it, but uh, I just don't feel brave enough to try the Alexandria Quartet. So, uh, I guess I'll leave it off here and say this is one of those rare moments when my mother's taste and mine actually did, uh, did align, and, uh, that's everything, and I guess I will see you all next week.